Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Wyatt. I'm a general dentist who has uh, practiced orthodontics only uh, for the last 45 years or so, uh, plus just a little temporal mandibular joint work that I've mixed in with the orthodontics. Uh, I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society, and this is a society of general and pediatric dentists uh, who are extremely interested in orthodontics and want to do real good orthodontics. And so I recommend if you are a dentist and you're doing some orthodontics, or even if you just want to understand some orthodontics, uh, join the American Orthodontic Society. Uh, it's a real good organization. We have a good journal. We have board certification. And if you pass the board to the American Orthodontic Society, you will know how to do orthodontics, and you can learn it nowadays. So I hope that those of you that are interested in it will uh, join the American Orthodox Society. Uh, I'm going to cover a subject today called condylohypoplasia. Uh, I've got some of these slides messed up. they got a little fungus on them and maybe I'll get somebody to take it off one of these days. But it's the only ones I have. I have a couple of cases here of condylar hyperplasia and uh, what this is is the it's a growing condyle on one side of the mouth and not on the other and it really makes people pretty lopsided and it's very difficult to deal with if you don't uh, go in and do some surgery on it so here we go uh, I'm gonna have to click over here and then we'll start uh, this young man. He transferred to me. He was in treatment with another guy and this guy kind of went out of the orthodontic work and uh, left him over there and so I said I could take this case. It looked simple enough uh, when I started it but it got more complicated the further I went. Uh, the guy's right jaw was outgrowing the left jaw and it was just moving over in this direction and uh, the face was getting further and further off and seemed like everything I tried <coughs> would uh, it just didn't work it just kept going in that direction uh, this side didn't seem to grow at all to keep up with it but the right side of the mouth grew and it got worse as I started to treat it. And I happened to go to a lecture on surgery, orthodontic surgery, and uh, they talked about condyl hypoplasia. <laughs> oh, that is exactly what this young man had. And uh, I was trying to treat it orthodontically, and you just couldn't couldn't get there. So I. Uh, sent him in to surgery and they uh, worked on the condyle on that side and straightened it up and we were able to finish him halfway decent after we got through with that but it never did look exactly ideal now uh, some of my slides got uh, fungus on them so you'll have to forgive me for that but uh, in this particular case the bottom jaw was outgrowing over here and it was shoving the mandible in this direction and yet it was widening out so we had a kind of a double cross bite on both sides of the mouth and I had treated stuff like this before and you know where we come in to separate the palate and move it out and line all this up and if everything could go along normal I was able to treat the case like this but this one didn't work that way and so you can be fooled pretty easily 
on some of these cases. Uh, this side was in a cross bite, looked like a ankylosed tooth down here. I don't think it was, I forgot exactly what we ended up with it. On this side it wasn't all that bad, it didn't look that bad. So anyway, I thought, well, we could go in there and do this case. It was that he had uh, bicuspids, if I remember correctly, taken out on the top. Uh, but not on the bottom uh, before I got a hold of the case. Uh, so anyway, we started out to, to treat him. Uh, this was back in 1976, and uh, we were still in brackets, you see. And the guy transferred to me in with, uh, into me with these bands and the brackets on there and I didn't take them off. I continued to work work with them. So anyway we started out trying to treat him and I did everything in the book trying to expand this and uh, work with it and we came back and took teeth out on the bottom you see to match those that were on the top and just did the best we could with it. And I lined it up, I got them all lined up, and had them in a, a rectangular wire, and was trying to expand and, and uh, get this arch over here, and pull this, pull this back in that direction to get it back over here. And it just wouldn't work, you see. The center line of the bottom jaw was off here in the center of the top was up here and it had gotten worse the harder I tried it seemed like the worse it got and I was pulling in this direction uh, trying to pull this over and bring this back in this direction and I was just working and I had a good cooperative patient the guy was just uh, tried he worked with me and everything and we worked as hard as we could and we just could not get this over here and I happened to go and take that uh, weekend seminar on surgical orthodontics and stuff where they had uh, condyl hypoplasia was dealt with and so I got a hold of the one of the surgeons there in our area and, and he took the case over and, worked on it we got it straightened out that way in that respect and uh, went ahead and finished it the orthodontics here we just close it up this is a little wire we tie on the button back here come through the arch wire we twist it down it's a very effective way of controlling as you close this together this will bring the arch wire in toward the lingual if you close it strictly from the buckle it'll tend to move to the buckle to some extent. So anyway, that's just another little trick we, we use in keeping the arch form like we wanted it. So here we were during treatment. I was trying everything in the book, you know. I was coming across here with a midline elastic. We had the molar cross by elastic, so in other words, uh, put it in here trying to get this to move over and trying to work with it here and here also and the guy was very cooperative and normally you could have just moved somebody around like that but it was growing in the wrong direction and uh, it didn't make any difference what I did I, it just was overpower what I was doing and uh, this is a mirror shot, just stuck a mirror in the mouth to get a picture of these elastics. Uh, I'm just trying to show you the effort that we had put out to try to get it there. <coughs> but uh, we just weren't, we just weren't getting there. And so we sent him into surgery, and I don't think I have any 
final pictures of this young man, but uh, we got him back and were able to finish it out. Okay. And I, you know, put a palatal separator in. I had it attached up here to the cuspids and the molars and had the hook back here to help me break the second molar along with it. Uh, but just could not uh, get what I wanted to out of that. But with surgery, it, it got a lot better. And got some of my slides pretty well ruined, but I never got uh, the finishing stuff for him. They had a terrible look on his face in this picture, but he was really a, quite a pleasant young man. Uh, in these pictures, it don't look look too much, but you can see how the chin is way off center. See. So this side of the mouth is wrong. Now, many, many people have a little bit of this. Their, their symmetry is not exact at all. And uh, there'll be different on one side the other side, but they're not as drastically different as this young man is or the next patient we will see here. But we got the surgery done and we were able to finish the guy up. And he looked pretty decent. The next uh, case I've got here is a young lady and it started growing wrong and we followed her for some time and I realized the problem so I didn't really tackle this case until we got uh, the surgeon involved in it and I got it started and then he did the surgical orthodontics. And her case was, I think, even worse because even with surgery, I couldn't uh, uh, get a decent uh, result with this case right here. Uh, you can see the difference in the shape of the jaw over here and the jaw on this side is quite, quite different. And uh, the occlusal plane is canted like mad or uh, something like that across there uh, and this really looks bad in this picture right here so I have these teeth touch it up here and uh, the angle coming across is something like that now as this condyle grows and pushes the jaw down here then these teeth have nothing much to touch up above on the right side so they erupt down too just because there's nothing to contact and they're contacting over on this side right here and the occlusal plane just goes off to one side terribly and it's very hard to orthodontically do much with them and it's very difficult apparently to do much with it surgically like you can maybe shorten the mandible over on this side and you have to then come in and take a wedge out of the maxilla up here to bring it up and then bring the mandible up part of the way and that really gets the thing lopsided and it's messed so the surgically surgical treatment is rather difficult and it's very difficult to get a real good result or at least the two cases that I have done over the years the result wasn't what I really would like uh, now this is the occlusal plane on that young lady and it, it's it's tough to deal with like if you take a wedge of tissue out of this side and then you've got the shortness mandible back here and bring it up on that side and the condyle fitting in the fossils, you just guessing at how it's going to fit in there. And so you have problems there too. So it's very difficult to actually come in here and flatten this occlusal plane out. So if, if you're just getting in and doing orthodox, even if you've had some good experience with it, 
this is a difficult thing to tackle and it's probably best if you send this on to uh, some specialist that's had some experience in it yeah. and a guy getting out of orthodontic school doesn't know how to handle it either uh, I can tell you that so you might get with a good surgeon that's done a lot of this and he will advise you uh, exactly how to do the orthodontics and that's what I've done with the surgical cases that I did I usually would work with several good surgeons in the Dallas Fort Worth area and uh, they would advise me as to how they wanted the orthodontics done if you can do the orthodontics they don't care they just want somebody that can uh, do the orthodontic part of it you see so we tried the best we could with this case, but the result wasn't, even after the surgery, wasn't what I really wanted to get out of this face to fix this case up. Here it is mounted, and you can see the difficulty in here. So the surgeon goes in and tries to figure out how he's gonna do this, and he does the best he can but it's very difficult to make one shorter on one side and keep it in an organized manner on the other side. So I would advise to let somebody else mess with these cases. Uh, we had done everything walking in the door during the 40-something years that I did this and did a good job of most of it. We didn't do it all perfect for you by a long shot. So you can see this this right side of the mouth, how different it is in this little girl. It's just really off to one side, just quite lopsided. So we did the surgery and everything, but uh, I don't have any good finished result to give you here but you can see what the situation is so if this comes up and you have a case that's called a hyperplasia i would advise you to recommend they go to a good surgeon that's had a lot of experience in doing this and if you want to do the orthodontics he can tell you how he wants it done and you can do it just as well as anybody else I always felt like I could and better than some of them so uh, you could work with that in mind but don't just jump on these cases thinking you're gonna be able to do this by yourself uh, and here it is and I'm sorry that's the end of this deal and I don't have any finished stuff to show you on it but I can tell you my result was not what I would like to have had and so this is condyla hyperplasia and this is a short little video but it may save you a lot of headache if you've never heard of it or never thought of it or anything and you get a patient with it and it's very severe you have very a lot of difficulty in doing these cases now if it's just a very slight amount which many people have and you don't notice it if you get to look at people's faces that speak on television and nearly everybody's off to one side a little bit you know they'll be tilted and that's not bad but uh, when they get really bad that they are bad so I'll leave you with that and we'll go ahead and finish this little video out here and I uh, appreciate y'all listening to this and I appreciate you joining the American Orthodontic Society if you're a general or a pediatric dentist doing orthodontics or even trying to or if you, anybody just wants to know something about it that'd be good. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll continue on here.